All right, we have a little video lesson here on how to create all of your linear regression uh, parameters using Microsoft Excel. Uh, we're going to do it kind of the by hand method, even though we use Excel to do all of our calculations. We'll do that first, and then we'll show how you can use a scatter plot to do it very quickly. Um, the first thing we're going to do, though, uh, is get a little, give a little history about what's going on here. Uh, back in the 19, late 1940s, a scientist by the name of Pierce discovered that there was a relationship between the rate at which crickets chirped and the temperature outside. And so what he thought would be a useful thing is we could use the cricket, um, cricket chirp rate to predict the temperature. And so we're going to use linear regression model to help come up with an equation that might do that for us. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is make sure that linear regression is appropriate. Let's create a scatter plot of this. So I'm going to highlight all of the data I have, go to insert, and sure enough, there is scatter. So we'll choose the very first one. And we notice that, yes, they tend to be on something of a line here. Um, I want to draw it a little bit better so that I can see the data up close. So in order to do that, go down here where one of the numbers is and double click on it. <clears throat> we want to change our x minimum value and our x maximum value. And we can probably get a good idea of what those are. Um, looks like the largest x value that I have here, that's the chirp rate, is 20. So maybe we'll go to uh, 21 in the x direction. Oops, now let's fix the minimum. Uh, for the minimum, uh, I see I've got 14.4 is about the smallest I've got, so let's go maybe down to 13 for my fixed minimum value. So just to change those. All right, looks great, except for the fact that now uh, the Y values are too stretched out, too narrowly displayed. And so we go through here, looks like my minimum Y value is in the high 60s. Uh, so let's go ahead um, and change that to something kind of mid 60s. The highest is 93.3, so maybe 65 to 95 would be a good choice for the minimum here. So 65, we said, to 95 down here. Okay, when I do that, I have a much better picture of what the graph should look like. And I do see that it falls kind of on a linear um, pattern. There are some, above, some kind of far below down here and one kind of up above, but that's okay. So I think a linear model is appropriate just by looking at the scatter plot. Okay. So in order, let me get rid of the ribbon here so we have more room to work. Okay. In order to calculate the correlation coefficient, which I need in order to calculate B1 and B0, uh, which are the parameters for my linear regression model, I need lots of things. And so let's go through those calculations. I need the chirp rate mean. In order to get that, I'm going to type use the average function. So when you use average, it means mean in Excel. And we're going to highlight all of those cells in the chirp rate. Close your parentheses and hit enter. And so our chirp rate mean is 16.57 chirps per second. We do the same thing with the standard deviation. So ST for standard, DEV for deviation, and we'll select the same group of numbers, and the standard deviation is 1.71 chirps per second. Now we'll do the same thing with the temperature mean equals average. Highlight all those guys. Uh, 79.35 degrees, and our temperature standard deviation, so standard deviation, highlight them all again. The standard deviation in temperature is 7.02 degrees. All right, now it's going to take a little bit more work to get the correlation coefficient. We'll do it sort of the long way using standardized values, and then we'll do it the short way using a built-in function of Excel. Okay, so the first thing we need to do if we want to do it the long way is to find the standardized values for both the chirps and for chirps per second and for the temperature. So here we're going to type in equals, again, because we want Excel to calculate something for us. Remember that the standardized value is the difference between the actual data point and the mean. Okay, so I'm going to type, I'm going to hit the actual data point, 
we want to find the mean. The mean chirp rate was 16.56. I could actually type that number in, but it's just easier to click on the button. We want to divide that then by the standard deviation. Okay. Now, if I hit enter, it will calculate that for me. But then I want to fill in all of the cells down here. And there's this little feature that if you click on the right, uh, the bottom right hand corner of a cell, you see how it turns from a solid plus, white plus, to a black one. If you pull it down, it will fill in all the data. But if I don't do something with the B18 and the B19 here, it's going to try to move those down as well, which would try to calculate using the temperature mean, the standard deviation, or the temperature standard deviation, and work all its, its way down. So what we do is we go in here and we put dollar signs around the Bs, which says always refer to that value and to that value. Okay. So now if I click on that cell, I've got the white plus sign, it changes to the dark. If we drag down, it will fill all those in. Okay. Now let me just go back and say, show you what the dollar signs did. Notice that this one says A2, which is that cell, minus the B18 divided by B19. If I click on the next one, it says, oh, we're going to do A3 minus B18 divided by B19. If I didn't do the dollar signs around those, it would try to do B9, or A3 minus B19 divided by B20. So that's why we put the dollar signs around there. Okay. So we've got all the standardized values there for the chirps, chirp rate. We do the same thing for the standardized values for the temperature. So we need parentheses again. Take the temperature minus the, the mean temperature, and we want to divide by the standard deviation of the temperatures. Again, we've got to go back up here and fix the mean temperature to put the dollar signs around it and the standardized or the standard deviation of the temperatures. Hit enter, click on the cell, make get that little positive or dark plus sign, and fill that in. Okay. We're only a couple short steps away from finding the correlation coefficient. To find the correlation coefficient, we need the product of these two numbers all the way down. So we're going to do equals. We want to do this number times this number. Hit enter. We click on that cell. And now again, we want to fill. We would want to drag and fill. And what I want you to notice is that so many of these are positive. Almost all of them are positive. We have one, two, three negative values. That means that as, the, as a whole, as the temperature or as the chirp rate goes up, so does the temperature. As the chirp rate goes up, so does the temperature because on the whole, most of these are positive. How do we get the correlation coefficient? To get that, we're going to find the sum of all these values. So we equals the sum, and then we just highlight all those. Okay. And it's kind of like an average, but not quite. Average, we would want to divide by the total number of data points, which is 15. But this, like the standard deviation, is all divided by 15 minus 1. So we're going to divide by 14, one less than the number of data points. Okay, so we divide that by 14. And we find our correlation coefficient is 0.832. <clears throat> okay. Let's find the correlation coefficient the very quick way. Type equals C O R R E L. Okay, and now it says the format is array one, comma, array two. So array one is our chirps per second, comma, array two is our temperature. I like those, and sure enough, we got the same thing. That's always good. Just a couple more short steps to get the um, equation. We need to find B1. To get B1, we take the correlation coefficient, multiply it by the change, nah, not the change, the standard deviation in the y values divided by the standard deviation in the x values. So it's kind of like change in y over change in x. So we're going to do equals. This is easy. The correlation coefficient, choose either one of them. Multiply by the chain, the standard deviation in the temperature. Standard deviation in the temperature is there. Divided by the standard deviation in the chirp rate, which is there. So our slope, remember that's what B1 signifies, our slope is 3.41. To get our y-intercept, 
we take our mean temperature, subtract our slope times the mean chirp rate. Okay. So again, we're going to calculate something, so we precede it with an equals. The mean temperature is 79 something, minus our newly found to be one, times our mean chirp rate, which is 22.849. Okay, so our equation would be y equals 3.41032 times x plus 22.849. That would be our equation. And so here's how we do it with um, the graph here. Let me make this a little bit larger so we can see it better. That didn't do it. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to right click on one of my points and look. notice it says add trend line. So I'll click on that. We want to do a linear one. It's already selected for that. And we can display the equation on the chart and we can display the r squared value on the chart, which is precisely the square of our correlation coefficients. So let's put those both on there. Let's make the font a little bit bigger, which means I need to go up to my ribbon and home. Let's increase the font size to make it a little bit more readable. Okay, close that ribbon down a little bit. Okay, and notice that the values that we got here are precisely the same ones that we got from the chart that Excel filled out for us. R squared even, we can figure out what R is equal to by taking the square root of that. So let's do that. Equals SQRT for square root 0 0.6923. Now we rounded that so it's not going to be exactly our R, but it's pretty darn close. 0 0.83205. And so that's how you can use Excel to create the um, linear regression model kind of by hand, and then through the use of the scatter plot.